Hello everyone. So today we will see how you can clear AWS Solution Architect Associate exam using my strategy. So as you can see here, I have scored 800 plus marks, and we need 720 and above or above marks to clear Solution Architect. So and also strategy which I will be sharing today will be applicable for the change pattern also so let's move forward so in market there is very one very famous course like I have what did Stephen Marek course for solution architect exam plus mock test by different educators so in Stephen Marek course you will get one uh, file which contains slides so in that particular course we have 879 slides so can you really remember all the information in those slides apart from that there are approximately 27.5 hours of content so can you really watch each and every video and even if you do will you be able to remember each of the particular technology and the nuances and the small details discussed so like even with the five months of time and all and all the resources all of the above cannot happen so what do we really have to do so here's the strategy which i have followed do reverse engineering give one mock test and revise slides then repeat the process give more mock tests and keep revising slides and maybe watch video for the concepts which are difficult so if you do it n times you will come to know there will be some pattern and some important concepts and some elimination tricks like in this video I have not created a uh, like standalone a knowledge point which have all the tricks but I will uh, demonstrate you two with two examples how basically you have to study see the whole point here is like no one is superhuman our memory at the end of the day is limited and also this is a paid exam so also so your hard earned money is on the line so obviously you want like whenever you are appearing for the exam you have to clear it and like for these 879 slides and this 27.5 hours of content all of this can become overwhelming at some time so what I am not saying I am not saying you don't have to watch the videos. You have to watch Stephen Marek videos for the concepts which you find difficult or are very new to you. Apart from that, you have to search on the internet for the technologies and the nuances that you have heard for the first time and you don't know already. So this particular strategy is not a replacement for videos, it's not a replacement for slides, but it is an emphasis on the very fact that at the end of the day, your memory is limited. You cannot remember each and every detail in 879 slides. Like in that slide, you can see there are somewhere there are EC2 instance specifications, somewhere there are different data sync techniques, and many more things. 
like even if i tell you just remember each and every detail of s3 which is discussed in the which are discussed in the slide even then you may fail with one or two information because like even okay like even if someone say like watch hands on or do hands on like they are partially correct you have to do hands on for some of the technology but doing hands on for each and every topic discussed in the supermarket lecture is an overkill for exam point of view like it is very good for your own learning purposes but it's a overkill for the exam so like coming back to our strategy so what was our strategy our strategy was to do reverse engineering and give mock then revise slides and we have to repeat this process n times on each step of the process we will find pattern we will find important concepts from which the questions being asked again and again in various mock tests and we will learn some elimination techniques for the incorrect one options so let's move forward let's take example of gateway versus in interface endpoints so for that like for remembering gateway and interface endpoints i always my mind always gets confused what what exactly is the gateway endpoint and what exactly were the details of interface endpoints i knew the details i have read them again and again so i remember the details but a kind of swap was happening within my mind so that i was not able to exactly pinpoint what exactly was the feature of gateway and what exactly was the feature of interface endpoints so i have made one mnemonic like there is a route in front of the gate like suppose in your house there is one gate in front of fr the front of the gate you have one route so for gate in front of the gate there is route so now we remember that this sentence is related to gate like route is related to gate so for uh, by remembering this sentence we come to know that in case of gateway endpoints routing is necessary we have to specify routing in route table in case of gateway endpoints so now we remembered this uh, particular uh, sentence so let's go deep into the concept so why routing is not needed in case of interface endpoint so we have like in interface endpoint uses private ip via elastic network interfaces like it interface endpoint provides private ip to you and because of which routing happens automatically why routing happens automatically because we in case of vpc we have we don't need to specify routing like diff Fault VPC routing. If you have suppose, uh, here is your VPC, and there are three subnets: subnet one, subnet two, subnet three. So, although uh, you have to specify routing for Internet Gateway, but for EC2 instance in subnet subnet three to access contents of EC2 instance in subnet two, it can happen automatically and like why it can happen automatically because vpc we have default inside vpc we have default vpc routing so we don't have to specify the in the route table like the resources within the subnets of a single vpc have to access each other resources like it can happen automatically via default vpc routing so what interface endpoint does is it gives a private ip so this particular private ip will make our resource like a standalone resource it within a subnet so that's why routing is not necessary in, in interface endpoint 
so here this concept was necessary to learn about the gateway and the interface endpoint but uh, within exam in uh, that short span of time we need a quick cache memory inside our mind so that this gateway is related to route like click within nanoseconds in our mind so that we can save our time for different analytical questions and move forward with by doing the question which are we have encountered again and again by doing mock tests so we have to study like this cause and effect relationship like here i have described you why interface and points use um, does not need a route like here in the stephen marik course it was not explained that routing is although it was mentioned that routing is needed in gateway endpoint and not needed in interface endpoint but it was not explained that why in interface endpoint routing was not needed so by this cause effect relationship kind of technique please uh, try to deduce the exact reason for the important concept that that way it will help you remember the concept easily like here by using this mnemonic technique we came to our starting point and then by the process of deduction and clearing concept we were able to deduce the, the whole information between gateway interface endpoints so without using this mnemonic technique and this clearing concept you may have chance of forgetting the exact differences between gateway and interface endpoint though your mind will remember the details of the gateway and interface endpoint like in one routing is used in one uh, private ip is allotted via eni one is for s3 one is for one is for s3 and dynamo db other other one is for the other resources but uh, this attachment that routing is related to gateway can only be done if you have a starting point like this mnemonic in your mind so moving forward so how do i come to know that i have to study and remember gateway endpoint versus interface endpoint in detail so this can only be done after doing mock tests like the process i have described here like doing mock test mock test and revising slides repeating the process you will come to know that this gateway interface endpoint question have encountered again and again apart from that you will get to know various other concepts which are repeated and from which the questions are always made so like uh, by solving mock test and seeing this question you will come to know this particular topic you have to remember and the details also you have to remember so let's take another example so in aws we have disaster recovering strategies called bpw like we have backup and restore pilot light warm standby and multi site so here uh, we have concept of recovery time object objective and recovery point of objective so one of the like here you can see we have mnemonic bpwm so here b stand for backup and restore p stand for pilot light w stand for warm standby and m stand for multi site approach so here you can see this particular arrow this arrow actually uh, signifies ascending order of like fast rto or descending order of rto like low rto uh, this arrow tells us that multi site approach we have lowest recovery time objective so if you remember this mnemonic bpwm in like bpwm are coming in this particular order so you will be able to know that okay i had in my notes uh, one arrow on above this and 
the low RTO was written. So okay, multi site will give us low RTO and backup and restore will have highest RTO. So you can use this kind of uh, various. Uh, you can make your own notes for these famous topics that you encounter in mock tests and this strategy worked for me giving 800 plus marks in solution architect along with giving me more time and freedom to be like honest uh, to explore the topics that i like to do in details so by doing this process you will be able to uh, manage exam hassle you will be able to use uh, your money optimally like uh, do the exam qualified in the first attempt itself and uh, from the time you will get in return you can do hands on of the technologies that you like like suppose you want to work on sqs you want to work on lambda mode so you can do the hands on and play with the projects and also the projects which are used in your college project implementation or in your startup or in your job so like exam and there is some kind of difference between exam and doing real world development like i'm not saying uh, by only following this strategy you can clear this exam of course there are different strategies uh, there may be people who just uh, follow each and every hands on on stephen marik and make their own notes revise and revise their notes and then go and give exam and clear and may get uh, marks even higher than 800 or maybe 900 but for the people who have time constraint who have other things to manage in life this particular strategy can help so that's all for today if you want to ask any question ping me in comments so thank you